Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Office Hours. Welcome, welcome. Let us know where you're coming in from in the sidebar. Um, hopefully some of you know the deal. If you've been to an office hours before, you know that you can ask a question in the ask a question area below so it doesn't get lost. And we're gonna do our best to cover those questions. Yeah, first rule of bullet journal is tell everyone about bullet journaling. Um, I'm really excited to be here with Matt Ragland and Brittany Berger, two fellow productivity nerds who are really excited about bullet journaling. Um, and the thing I love too about Notion is of course, everyone's Notion space looks so different. So I'm really excited to see what bullet journaling looks like for each of you in your own space. Um, so again, uh, what we're going to do is Brittany's going to share her space. So Brittany, if you want to do a screen share, we're going to start. We'll do a little bit of a tour. Again, if any questions pop up, just add them to the ask a question area. I'll keep an eye on that and we'll we'll do our best to uh, to answer those as we go. We have had a few come in. Um, so maybe I'm going to read a couple of these in case you have your own opinions about this as you go through your tour. Uh, but a few people have asked about what are your biggest time saving tips? Looking forward to learning from you. Um, I have a bullet journal set up in Notion, but never ended up using it. So maybe you guys will have tips on on how to actually make use of your bullet journal. Um, I recently bought a physical journal for bullet journaling, but I find I haven't started because I've been too intimidated. What are some tips and where are some good places to start with bullet journaling in general? And what is your process when transferring what's written on paper to digital? So I think those are some great questions to start with. Um, you can either cover them as we go, or maybe we can just do a bit of a tour. You can kind of decide how you want to um, address some of those questions. First thing I have to say about being too intimidated to use a notebook is good notebooks were meant to be used. Mm -hmm. Oh man, like I've never personally, like, I do understand it, but personally when I get a really good, nice or pretty notebook, I understand that some people like want to keep it that way, but like, no, it was made to be used. You've got to let it live its purpose. It's the first page, right? It's the intimidation of like, ah, what's the first thing I'm going to write? It has to be epic. And it doesn't. That's just, why yeah. I love the index with the bullet journal. It's just like, I'll figure this out later. I just need to write down like the one. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Awesome. Um, so you know, like we said, this is everyone's bullet journal setup can be super um, different and customized. My overall theme with work in general is like whimsical. There's lots of bright colors and funny quotes. Like I know I got the idea to put a quote up here from a YouTube video where someone had an inspirational quote. I have Paris Geller from Gilmore Girls. <laughs> but that really is like a quote that hit me <laughs> once and I find very motivational and inspirational. <laughs> um, so let me just open up Notion on my phone where I have my plan for today. So this is my bullet journal, but um, how I get to the bullet journal in general and my kind of workflow is I have my launch pad, which is where everything opens up. Um, the Sims is kind of like my analogy for life and productivity and self-care. So I have a good Sims GIF. This lets me jump straight to a different area and working on myself takes me to my bullet journal. And so that's usually how I get to my bullet journal. And the launch pad is just a lot of other stuff that, you know, we can t talk about if there's time, but it's just like quick, most frequently referenced stuff and like the tasks that are due today and stuff like that. Uh, and so then in my bullet journal, kind of the overall um, division of stuff is this top section is kind of oh, my daily. Brittany, just a quick note. I noticed because like our videos are like covering some of your space. So if you're able to oh. scroll down a little bit just to give a little bit more visibility. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Is that good? That's great. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's divided into three areas, um, kind of the same way that I used to divide up my actual bullet journal. And the inspiration for all of this is just how I actually bullet journal, because that's what's going to be e the easiest workflow for anyone to keep up with is what they were already doing or, you know, it's close to. But so it's very adapted for what I was already doing on paper. And, you know, at the beginning, I have my future log. This takes me, it's in a different area, but so this is my calendar generally set up in Notion, but just I borrowed the bullet journal language when I first created it. So that's actually a link to a different area of Notion, like my para area. Mm -hmm. um, and then the same way that I would have my physical bullet journal set up, I have monthly spreads, weekly spreads, and daily journals. And along with my habit tracker, health habit tracker and word count since I do uh, a lot of writing. And these are all basically different um, 
these are all databases that are connected to each other in some way. So like the, um, the monthly spread, you can see there's December and you can see I haven't connected it yet, but I'll connect it to the weeks and then the weeks are connected to the days and whatnot. And this is a linked database of the future log with just the, um, just the December stuff come up and yeah, it's just um, linked entries to everything work and personal and it's color coded. So you can see personal stuff like um, birthdays and holidays and stuff like that any projects that have the date set. And then down here is, I haven't actually done this yet, but uh, my monthly goal setting for December. And I usually do it on the first Friday of the month. Today is like my admin and reflection day. So this will be filled out by the end of the day. <laughs> Report back. <laughs> no. Yeah. Now I have the accountability. <laughs> And then, yeah, the month then drill down to the weeks. Um, personally, I find it really helpful to just like my view of planning is kind of top down. So like I start with the months and then I go down to the weeks and then I go down to the days. And so it's just very much organized around, again, the way my brain naturally flows. I do not want to stress that enough that the way everything is organized, it's because my brain already thinks that way. Um, and then the weekly spreads, I think I actually started from one of your templates, Marie, but it's just like the layout of the week. Um, these actually do have some personal client stuff in there, so I'm not going to go into them. Um, yeah, and then the daily spreads um, are like just my daily journaling. Um, and you can see how it's evolved um, to here's where I started using templates that automatically added the um, automatically added the icons and like sometimes it's business related reflection sometimes it's good place spin-offs i want to see it's just like a brain dump at the end of the day i just i saw a tweet at the end of the night about good place spin-offs and i could not go to bed until i got out all of the different ideas for them that i had as well and so that ended up being my um my daily journaling that day um, and then I also, these are all based on templates. So we go yeah. look at some of these. Um, so this is the one that I use most often. It's the daily recap. And some of the different fields that I have are just the date so that it's organized. I can organize it, you know, using those formulas and stuff like that. And then here are all the different relations so that it can attach my habit tracker, health, writing, week. Um, also something we'll get to in this, further down on the bullet journal main page is important feeling moments. So those are just kind of celebrating my wins. Uh, so yeah, I go through um, my daily at the end of the day, I do brain dump, uh, I do, um, so these stats, this is just more linked database views. So this is just, you know, I filter it to the right date and I have this reminder to myself to do that. And my health tracker, habit tracker and word count tracker, yeah. And then it also, um, I'm trying to work on my word counts right now. And so it also has a formula field that adds up the word counts from my writing tracker. And I think that that's like a formula field or a roll-up field or something like that. Awesome. And then what other templates do we have? I also have a version of the five minute journal uh, because I love the five minute journal. I have the app for my phone, but I was finding that I don't, I try not to be on my phone as much um, during the uh, during the morning and night when I'm journaling. And so um, I found it easier to use it on my computer. And it's just the same kind of things that you fill out in the app or the five minute journal. And then the final template I have in here is just because I deal with a lot of chronic anxiety. And so I have an anxiety brain dump where this is just kind of how I process anything that's really, really causing me a lot of anxiety and stuff like that. And I actually take these to therapy with me. That's um, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's really useful as a tool. And the health tracker I take with me to the doctor because I have a lot of chronic, uh, chronic illness as well. Um, and that's, uh, those two things are really why I, or how I finally got consistent with bullet journaling. Like I had burnt bullet journaling. I had done it like on and off, but then when it really became a priority and I had to start tracking this stuff for my health, um, bullet journaling was the answer that ended up being the answer to do so. So yeah. So whenever I have something that's making me really anxious, um, kind of listing out what happened, how I feel about it and what I can do about it just kind of helps me adjust my mindset. 
uh, doesn't necessarily solve the problem, but it helps me through it for the time being. Mm. And it just kind of helps me separate like feelings from facts. It helps me recognize what I actually can do something about and the things that I can't change. And yeah, it just, it really helps a lot, at least, you know, for until I can get to therapy or deal with the problem better. That's awesome. Yeah. And so that is, those are my regular, like daily, weekly stuff like that. And then I also have um, the collections and these, some of these are, uh, some of these are also databases and some of these are just lists that eventually I'd probably want to start turning as much into, as possible into databases just since I love like you can see you know I can make it all pretty and stuff like that but yeah so I have just a list of journaling prompts when the anxiety prompts aren't doing their job um celebrating all my wins uh this is like my brag box I used to call it it, yeah (laughs) yeah my objective proof against imposter syndrome and these are just like the facts of my career or my life that I cannot deny I love Uh, that yeah (laughs) um this is just like some manifesting mindset stuff, um, favorite quotes. I think this is actually also, is this? Yeah, so this is actually also a linked database from like articles and books that I read. So, and there's a lot from the bullet journal method. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and How to Do Nothing is a really great book. I just totally recommend it. Um, Yeah, so that's actually another linked database going out to another area of my Notion setup. Um, my watch list, love TV and movies. And so that's just a place to compile things. Um, I actually do something interesting for my book list in that I just, I like having it in Notion and being able to get to it from Notion, but I link out to it on Amazon because something not everyone realizes is that anything in your, um, in your wish list on Amazon, if it's on sale, it says so in your wish list. And so I like to like once a week, just click through to this and see what books I want to read are on sale. And so mm-hmm. it's just easier to keep it all collected in there because then I can do that and buy lots of books. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, just an ongoing shopping list of stuff I want. And then ongoing health notes is just another thing that I can bring up for my doctor when need be. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't think I showed my habit and health tracker. I don't know if I want to, but I'll talk about what's in <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the habit tracker just goes through like the regular habits that, um, I want to do daily. It's like divided into different views by like my morning routine, my evening routine, and it's just all checklists. And so then I can just, it's easily embedded in the daily journal. Um, the health tracker is stuff like what meds I took since what meds I take depends on the symptoms I have, which I also track, um, what food I ate and just an overall rating. And then something that's really helpful for me that can be helpful for anyone with chronic illness is that I made a checkbox for when I was in a flare up. So that way, when I go to my doctor Mm -hmm. once a month or once every other month, I can have a view that I literally just bring. I have a dedicated view of things to talk to him about. And that's pretty awesome and incredibly helpful, especially Mm -hmm. if you if your chronic illness is one that has brain fog, because otherwise you do not remember this stuff that is so important to remember. And so it's kind of a, um, a catch 22 that bullet journaling and tracking and notion can help you get out of. That's really good. Yeah. And then the word count tracker is something that's really important to me. Cause I went through a thing earlier this year where I felt like I was not writing at all anymore because this year I pulled back a lot on client work for my, personal brand business like BrittanyBurger.com uh, to do to start up my own my own community and stuff like that. And so I was writing less client work and more short emails and social posts and landing pages and stuff like that. And I realized that while it felt like I didn't write it, wasn't writing as much anymore because I wasn't writing like multiple thousand word blog posts a week or whatever. Um, I was still actually writing more than I was before. It was just different writing and it was smaller pieces. And the word count tracker totally cured me of that imposter syndrome. I'm a writer who doesn't write any more thing that I was uh-huh. going through. So I was like, I'm actually writing more. It's just different and more split up. Um, yeah, so those are the rest of the trackers. And then the last big thing in the bullet journal area is just, these are just kind of like links from my para setup. Um, I haven't fully decided how I want to like kind of integrate bullet journal, the bullet journal area and the para area that I set up. Like once I had gone through building a second brain 
I guess it was in October, I think, September or October in the mm -hmm. fall. So I haven't like totally reconciled that yet. So for now it's just a linked database and this just has some learning stuff. Like these was, this is where I have some notes on the courses I'm going through right now. Um, Self-care is a lot of like mental health and uh, more anxiety stuff. And life admin is like house chores, boring stuff. <laughs> I love how the, you even made the the not so exciting stuff colorful and, and fun. Yeah, well, because <laughs> I really, I, I am a Sim. <laughs> and the, the Game Boy Color, just imagine the Sims on there, like I playing myself, <laughs> <laughs> winning the game. <laughs> the game of life. That's another game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so, so that's like my area. Um, that's, yeah, so this is the main bullet journal area that we're talking about, um, some other, Kind of notable areas are let's open this up like i talked about my launch pad i have my inbox which i just brain dump things in throughout the day and usually once a week or more often depending on how full it gets um i move things out to where they go I can quickly do my journals um projects and tasks are part of my plan area and this is the uh the para setup and I like to say it's like where I get my ducks in a row. <laughs> and yeah, I've got my goals, areas, projects, tasks, and routines. That's kind of how I like organize my, it's kind of like my modified para because I really like thinking in terms of routines and just embracing my creature of habit side. Yeah. And then this is like my archive, maybe someday ideas, things I'm waiting on. That is actually really helpful. And it just has like what orders I've placed and haven't received yet for like online shopping again brain fog i'll forget um and then sometimes things don't get here <laughs> you know stuff like that you know it happens mm -hmm. um oh this is the home of my future log even though it's linked to in the bullet journal and then the weekly schedule is just um a, a um a linked database view of recurring tasks from the oh. tasks area yeah and then yeah, just here are the areas. They're all bright and pretty and they're themed. So like anything like money making related is a piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> anything writing related is a keyboard. And that actually really does make things easy as well as aesthetically Enjoyable. pleasing. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, really that's one of the biggest draws of Notion, I think, is just being able to make it so visually appealing and fun to use. And Yeah, yeah and I really like easy. doing so, so that it really does serve a purpose. Like there are emojis all over, but then when it comes to like my future log, I'm actually using just boring colored dots instead of like fun, more fun emojis or something because like that's just easier there. Um, but yeah, everywhere else, like I know that like piggy bank means money and like <laughs> keyboard, I know, like my brain has made the connection. Love that. Yeah, so that's pretty much everything. I suppose I can stop my screen share now. A couple questions that popped in here. Oh, sure. um, let's see if, um, and I'm sure they'll be great yeah. for Matt to answer as well. Uh, when you're on the go and you have a thought that you want to put in your journal, how do you set up Notion to make that process as quick and frictionless as possible? I actually write down on paper a lot on the go. Um, I am still very much a paper person for a lot of things. And so part of my daily review process is taking anything important that I scribble down that's not like useless scribble by the end of the day <laughs> and putting it into the inbox. Cool. Um, and then sometimes also I do have the apps drafts on my phone just since uh, it is a little, it is quicker on um, and like more designed for brain dumping and stuff like that than Notion, but it has those actions because it's really designed to be like a holding space for information and not like a home. And so it makes it really easy and qu quick to copy it out and into the Notion inbox. Cool, I know some people have mentioned, oh, do you have a, a thought on that, Matt, as well? Well, I was just gonna say that I like Brittany when I have like that initial thought in my head and I wanna get something down, I still use same thing, a notebook a lot of times, like this is just a simple field notes notebook here that I'll just keep with me uh, because the my ability to get distracted in small, <laughs> within <laughs> like as the smallest action that I wanna do on my phone is so high 
And I know this was kind of, uh, and we were talking about this a little bit in the chat, is there are like a couple of steps it seems to go through in order to capture something quickly in Notion. And so a lot of times, because I can get just as distracted going through and being like, oh, I also need to do this in Notion instead. So uh, uh -huh. for a quick capture, if I am doing some kind of quick capture in my phone, I'm often doing it on the Bear Notes app. Ooh. How do I close this? I don't even know how to close the screen share. Okay. Oh, there's an X button. That was the <laughs> that was a uh, screen sharing screen sharing inception. <laughs> about. Yeah. Awesome. Didn't see the very obvious button. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't. Sorry, I'm just sorry. glad you went first. Sorry, it, was so his head. Big. it was so big. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. All right, yeah, Matt, why don't you pull up yours and then we can go through at the end and kind of cover some of the questions that have that have popped up. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, this is just an honor and like a thrill for me to be on as well. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And here we go. It will be off and running. Okay. All right, can y'all see everything all right? I can't see me sharing yeah. the screen. Okay, <laughs> great. So this is this is my uh, I keep things. Uh, one of the things that I seem to have become a little known for in terms of the bullet journal space is keeping things really simple. And one of the reasons I do that is because <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm not like capable of too much more too many things being more complicated than than they are. Um, and so I also really value a speed as much as I can. And so the more like simple and minimal I can get things, the the faster that I can get to them and kind of understand what's going on. And I'll also say as like full disclosure, I still do like like Brittany was saying, I still do the majority of my planning in uh, a paper in like a regular notebook journal. And so what you're going to see here is how I do use, uh, you know, the bullet journal methods in Notion and, you know, how I would transfer those back and forth. So uh, one thing that uh, I can drop in that I can drop in the chat, I'll put in there earlier, but a lot of people were asking, like, how do you how do you transfer things between an analog bullet journal and digital bullet journal in Notion. And I actually have a video about that that I'll drop awesome. into the chat a little bit later on. Cause there is like, there are a couple of concepts that I use to understand how I want to use those two things separately. Because obviously there are some things that you can do in Notion or any kind of like digital productivity tool that are near impossible <laughs> to do with an analog uh, style bullet journal. But the way that my layout looks and works is right at the top, I have my like yearly themes, things that I want to really focus on and pay attention to. Um, 2018 was a relatively unhealthy year for me. And so I made like, you know, it's just self care and health a bigger priority and theme uh, going in, going into 2019. And then what I'll do is so I actually have these set up by month and then i go into each month and i have like kind of the sub the sub weeks in there as kind of subcategory so let's just go into december and i'll show you like this is what this week has looked like uh, i've been practicing this you know like i said a little bit more coming into coming into this this uh, workshop to into the office hours but what i'll do is as I go into a week, I'll start using like the to-do items as kind of that classic bullet journal, you know, just like to-do item or task item. And so this is how I do my rapid logging with the to-do boxes. If I have something that's really important, like I'll pop that up right at the top, like Tuesday, I wanted to hold that I wasn't going to have any meetings, um, any kind of, any kind of like, solo meetings or little things that I have to do that are not, I'll talk about the future log in a second, but they're not like super important. <laughs> they're just like things to do. I'll put those in obviously as date items. And if y'all haven't done that in, um, if y'all haven't done that in Notion before, it's as simple as saying, like I would have said like 10, a today, 10 a.m. I love that. Uh, <laughs> brunch, brunch, brunch. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but typing live on video is something to be avoided at all costs. Uh, 
because it just I'm just going to leave it at brunch. Yeah. But then I can just you know, like hit hit the at uh, mention and start to bring up either a person or a date. Um, it took me a little while to figure out that I could do more than just mention people, but also mention a date with that. And mention pages. Symbol. So if you so if you wanted to mention another database too, right? You could. Oh quick, no way! Yeah, you can quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my writing log almost as much as possible. Like I try to actually link to the actual piece I was writing in my yeah. content area. Okay. Well, that's awesome to know because yeah. like yeah. you can see right here <laughs> that I had um, yesterday I put in and this was just to an original page. So I was doing a link right there. So you're saying it's the same thing just to like do the at symbol for that. Exactly. Yep. Oh man, this is great. Yeah. Just, <laughs> fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is how I'll set it up. So I'll use the to, I'll use the to do um, block for those to do items, uh, date, date calls, and then um, these are, oh yeah, so you're saying, <laughs> we've been sick all week at the house, mm -hmm. so that's been kind of rough, but uh, these are like little notes. So I'll just use the bullet points in the Notion database as my notes, whereas, you know, in, because partially, you know, in Notion, it would just be that quick, quick dash, but of course that becomes a list item in Notion and most other like markdown places. Um, so that's how I'll lay out my my week. And then what I'll do just to kind of clean. Oh, let me show you. So for the weekend, it usually um, I'll just I'll have a little bit more fun and use the emojis here. Um, and then the way that I do different uh, capture. And so what I'll do down here is that I have these three, four uh, places that I post um, the different. These kind of act as more of my capture pages for the weeks as they come up. And so I'll have something here for my work at Podia, stuff with home and family, uh, Freed and Bound is my own business, and then miscellaneous tasks. And so I'll have all of these uh, places and I'll just continually add in notes. I'll continually add in notes to um, these capture areas so that when the new week comes up, so let's say, for example, what I'll do is I'll take everything from Monday the 2nd, I'll just drop it directly into the archive, change this to the ninth, and I will then drag something from the capture list up here and just start going through it again. So that would be at this coming Monday. Yeah, should have put the 11 a.m. But and Matt, do you have a daily yeah. um, a daily entry as well, like a daily journal or something like that? Yes. Yeah, so what I do with that, so this is everything that I do, um, like for from a task perspective, and then coming back into the main layout, this is where I go into the daily tracker. And so this is where I show different, this is where I show different things like I'll put, um, <laughs> I say these days are bad because everyone was sick, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I have a select property here and it'll just be simply saying, like select an option. Again, I try and keep things as simple as I can. So good, okay, bad, um, red, yellow, green, kind of using that stoplight analogy. I'll put in the amount of sleep that I got. And then like my basic, like three, the three core habits that I know when I do them, I'm happier. And so that's where I put them in. And then I do like any daily journaling that I'm doing is all in, I won't uh, click into those, but they're all in here as well what so in terms of like the daily journaling i'll just put them in this database view yeah one of the reasons i asked because i know that when you um selected everything from your weekly like december 6th or whatever i'm curious mm -hmm. uh is there a reason that you don't just like move all of those into the daily entry at the end of the day yeah i mean that's that's a good that's a good point i probably should um, but that was just kind of, yeah. That maybe you had a became, reason for it. I was just curious. Yeah. Like, I didn't. The only reason was that it's just right there. Um, yeah. And one, so so I one could... thing that, um, and again, and this, this may not be useful for you or helpful, but just something to be aware of is knowing that you can mention other pages. You could have Monday right. at December 9th and you could, like, you could kind of have a quick link to that and, or like I, where I have Monday nine, I would just be like, you know, mention right december 9th or whatever gotcha. um, yeah, and then those down here and then you could select all of those high those uh to do's at the bottom and i would just hit like command shift p move those into december 9. yeah if i was there just curious go. if you had a reason that um 
I don't. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like I, I love yeah. seeing the way other people's brains work and kind of what is helpful for you. Yeah. No, I really like that. I'm going to, I'm going to start using it. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, a lot of, I think, you know, something that's just, you know, just for me in terms of like how I say in my brain works a little bit is I tend to, um, I'm not a, I'm not a fantastic, I'm not a fantastic optimizer. A lot of times <laughs> I just find the thing that can work in a relatively quick amount of time. And as long as to me, um, the act of, um, and I know y'all are all fantastic with it too, but the act of whatever I can do to be consistent yeah. is the most important thing to me. And I do a lot of <laughs> like, if I try, if I try something else to a point and I feel like it's throwing me off, like my ability to stay in a daily or every other day rhythm with totally. this, yeah. then I'll just kind of push it to the side for a little bit. Um, until I get on an office hours call and you can tell me directly uh, a better way. So, <laughs> well, I mean, there is such right. a thing as like over, you like going overboard, over optimizing, making things too complex. And then you kind of have to, I think, pull back a little bit. So I think it's so important to find like what is just enough and sure. not taking it, you know, tweaking that 99% that's not actually helping you at some point. Right. No, but yeah. I love so what you're saying is right here. You know, I like actually have a running thing. list in Notion. I think it's in the inbox of like things I want to do in Notion <laughs> because it can like be that. so easy to get like caught up in like, oh, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. That when I have an idea, I put it in that list. And then I have like admin time blocked out in my calendar. And that's when I can like go and review that. A lot of it, I just end up deleting. And then I can, sorry, <laughs> um, um, that might buzz again. Uh, so ignore it. Um, but that, um, yeah, to just do things as they make sense. And instead of implementing things as soon as the idea comes to me, um, I kind of like, kind of put it in purgatory. Yeah. I don't um, like using that word. I really like yeah. that. <laughs> Matt, I yeah, saw I that you were trying to move, the, trying to move stuff into December 3rd. You can't actually right. move it into the mention, but you can actually do a commit, like highlight it all, click on the dots on the left and say move to, or, or, um, I just hit command shift P. I use move uh, to gotcha. all the time, but then you can just, yeah. you know, type in the place that you want to send it. And, um, yeah, just, there you go. And this is great. <laughs> I'm getting like coaching here. Y'all This is great. <laughs> uh, and then down here, this is where I'll do my weekly review. And then I just yeah. use uh, toggle lists for all of these. So that way I can keep it all in that way. I can keep it all in one place Tidy. at the end of this, I'll dump it into, I'll dump it into the archive and keep going. Uh, the months, past months go in here. And then usually what I'll do just to keep things clean is I have this month template right here that I just uh, drop in, change the emojis and everything and uh, keep going from there. So here are my past months since I started doing more digital bullet journaling over the nice. summer. Um, so that's where I drop in all of the archives from the past months. I'll just, you know, go right in there. And then uh, like Brittany, I do a lot of linked uh, databases as my collections. So I have like some writing projects that I might be doing here. And I just, you know, have, have several of those. And then I just have a, a book, a book list. So those are, those are the things that are, that are most important to me. I also do, um, I have intermittent success with being consistent with this. Uh, but I do have, <laughs> I try and keep an emoji key. I like that. Or yeah. different things. So Brittany showed this too, but that way, when I, when I glance at something and I just see like, this group. I know that this is family related work, side business, time off, adventure, fitness, like any of those things. So if I see that dropped in, then I know without reading <laughs> the two or three words that are on them, that um, that's something that is, um, that's, that's what it's related to. One thing that I do like in the bullet journal, or sorry, in Notion, way more than uh, a bullet journal is is the future log. And the way that I, I referenced this a little earlier, but the way that I use the future log against things that are going into the weekly spread is if it's if it's a pretty like relatively small thing or something more specific to the week, like I did a webinar for our customers uh, a couple of days ago on Wednesday, that's, you know, just, that's just kind of something that I do. What I use the future log for a lot more is the like big like more of the big events so like i um taught at a mastermind yesterday uh, my parents are in town 
uh, football game tomorrow, when my wife works on a podcast. So some of these things are a little bit more, um, they're not as normal. They're not like a regular part of the rhythm of my week. So I want to have like an aware, a uh, higher level of awareness of when I'm glancing through like things that are outside of the normal, like I said, the normal rhythm and cadence of a week. And I just drop these in here into the future log. And something that I can do that I do fairly regularly, um, and y'all have shown me <laughs> new and better ways to do it is like just mentioning or linking to them. So um, whereas this, I just did a tomorrow at 3 p.m. I could also do um, if I wanted to right there. Mm -hmm. So I can drop that in as well. Um, yeah. So those are the main things for me in terms of, yeah, how I do bullet journaling on uh, on Notion, in Notion. Happy to share other stuff, but that is yeah, kind of the the main way that I, I set it up. And I yeah. love it. Yeah, I know a couple of questions uh, trickled in too that were, are definitely going to be relevant to both of you. So people were asking about whether you also use Google Calendar. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely for me. Um, you know, and because like I, I work for company with Podia and like that's what we use. So it's it's yeah. really difficult to get away from. <laughs> yeah, and I use it, but I use it differently. So there's some stuff that I put on my calendar, but not in Notion. There's some stuff that I use for Notion for, but that would never go on my actual calendar. Like yeah. all of my client deadlines are in my future log, uh, but I would never put those on my actual calendar because there's like multiple a week and they're not time specific. And it's just a lot of clutter on my actual calendar, but in my future log, it is helpful. And then it's also in this database to the projects. So yep. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just how I map the due dates for different things. Um, and then there's stuff that goes on both. So yeah, um, yeah. So I do still use Google Calendar, but very differently. So it's not. It sounds annoying, more annoying than it is. Yeah, yeah. I think you gotta kind of find your groove with like what's a quick ad versus what needs to become a task versus what goes in the calendar. I think it takes a little bit of time to. Yeah, and like I always struggled with like how, the best way for me to manage client deadlines because there were too many for my Google Calendar. But then if I logged into like say something else it just it didn't work as well and so this actually solved something that i've been trying to figure out for a while very cool uh so i was asking are there any bullet journal templates on notion that you can share let me drop the link in the yeah. comments <laughs> <Ta> <laughs> yes i did create a template like database type of thing for all of the different trackers that i have so i'll put the landing page in there you, can just, you can sign up for my newsletter and you'll get it um, it's an amazing newsletter so <laughs> yep, and I'll do the same right in here, right after I sign up for Brittany. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's the first time I've created Notion templates, so let me know if they don't work and I'll fix them later today. Cool. Uh, one thing I have noticed is sometimes there's trickiness if you're sharing a template that already has pre-made uh, relations. So I'm still working, trying to figure out some workarounds mm. for that, but that's something to be aware of. Um, Jessica asks, what's the formula for getting the word count? Okay, so yeah, we can dive into that a little bit more. Um, I'll share my screen again. We'll just create a new entry so you can't see too much of my client work. <laughs> All right. So if we go to the bullet journal, come on, there we go. So it's just the date and the um, the word count. So it's very simple in itself. And then where the magic happens actually is in the daily log. Let's look at that. Okay. All right. So yeah. So this is. Let's see. This is a roll up. Um, and it's connected to the writing one. And so then the roll up is just configured to be a some of the different word counts connected to the writing. So there has so to be a relation see. first. So because she's related to her writing database already, then she can pull a, like any property that she wants from that, that database. Yeah, so yeah, I can't explain it well, but um, yeah, so anything that's connected up here, um, it will 
sum up the numbers. Yeah, we'll sum up the total there. That's great. Oh, I just dropped a link into the chat as well because I'm seeing some like totally normal uh, comments in the chat about like, you know, just the getting set up of Notion can feel a little daunting and it can because I think like a lot of what and because, you know, it's two sides of the same coin, something that is as powerful and flexible as Notion is. It can be like, well, how do I get started with something that's super? And, you know, a yeah. lot of times bullet journaling can feel very similarly because you're like, well, there are these like legends and keys and there's an index and there's collections and there's like migrating and like all these different things. I actually talked about this on um, a video collab I did yesterday uh, with a guy who's trying to get into like has failed at bullet journaling um, <laughs> like many times. And I found it really interesting that he would say that because he's one of the best like habit coaches <laughs> that I know. I'm like, Anthony, you already know how to do this. You just think of it like a habit instead. And he was like trying to do all the things. And the, th mm. what, the way to get over this is not to try and do all the things or have like the most elaborate setup, whether it's bullet journaling or setting up Notion, try and do like the first basic thing that you can figure out and learn how to do like, or just play around with it a little bit. I always like, no matter what I'm trying to do or like someone that I'm working with when I was at ConvertKit or now at Podia or when we're doing like bullet journal stuff is uh, have like one simple goal to start with and try and do everything that you can to get to that like one kind of simple like starter goal because as you even kind of struggle through that a little bit, then you'll have like really specific questions to follow up with about reaching that initial goal rather than trying to like, blow your own mind with like <laughs> everything that you could do because it can it can get overwhelming big time i'm big on what i like to say baby steps for big progress and just doing one Love thing it. at a time and then actually the thing that kind of convinced me to finally use notion for bullet journaling uh was the bullet journal method book it was so great and just managing a lot of like kind of my yeah <laughs> <laughs> of course yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. I like give it away to my membership. It's like the regular giveaway for my membership inside. Um, cause I just want everyone to read it. And, um, yeah, it was so great. And it was like it, yeah, I kind of had some, even though I had been bullet journaling on and off since 2014 and then consistently since 2017, um, I still had like a lot of apparently like mindset blocks around it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just an amazing book and it so much more than bullet journaling. It's really not yeah, about, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was like, really pleasantly my, surprised. <laughs> my biggest takeaway from the book was that I actually owe bullet journaling more, even more credit than I was already giving it. <laughs> Cause I was like, oh, I hadn't connected this thing and this thing and this thing to bullet journaling, but like, oh, that's why it happened. And yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, Marcus said something that I thought was interesting too. Uh, when the idea is putting in more manual effort, why a notion and not on not on paper? And I do think that is like it's a good point and something not to be taken lightly when you're doing something like this. Is if your you know goal is to get ideas down as quickly as possible, then a lot of times paper is going to be a better and quicker choice. Like we both we all said that kind of at the beginning. Um, I said, I'll, I'll drop the link back in towards uh, in just a moment, but I did a video about how to kind of balance the two, because like, obviously there's some things that you're seeing in terms of databases and relation relationships and like just ed obviously editing capability, like people who write, who like write their, either their blog, their articles or like people who write novels longhand on paper is just in totally bonkers to me. Um, so there, there are pros and cons of each and yeah. So, but if you're, if your goal is to do like the quickest, fastest thing, then yeah, a lot of times paper will be the best, best option. For One me, of that's not always the case since again, chronic illness and more physical effort likely, you know, it has a cost. Um, and so for me, a lot of the times it's great when I, my laptop's nearby and I can just do less movement. So one of the things that digital journaling started out for me was like when I was too sick or um, not feeling well or fatigued to physically get up out of bed and write and stuff like that, I could grab my phone and 
use digital journaling instead. Um, and so for me, the, the digital stuff is usually less effort. And the main way I decide what I'm going to do offline versus or digital versus analog is how much I'm going to reference it because I use um, like smaller notebooks. Yeah, um, great point. I have a lot of feelings, so I fill them <laughs> up quickly. Um, and so if it's stuff, so that's why I like stuff that's more that I'm like the habit trackers and like the kind of statistics stuff that's more bigger picture. I like keeping that online because otherwise I'm going to have to grab a whole pile of notebooks just to get like a six month view or something like that. So things go digital for me when it's stuff that either I you know don't have the energy to go get a notebook for or write. Um, or if it's something that I'm going to be wanting to reference a lot in the future and like months away when I'm using a new notebook. And, that, you know, to tie it back to what you were saying about how it's easy to forget your progress and say like, oh, I thought I wasn't writing, but I actually was. Um, I feel like Notion has helped me track things like, again, like I can't, I could go through all of my past notebooks and see this stuff, but like I can see all of my feelings, my effectiveness. I can see my my gratitude over time. Like I just love being able to track all of this stuff. I can look at what I read. Um, you know, if I just want to see it, the reading view, I can look back and see everything that I read. Um, I can see what I felt. I could see what I was grateful for. I could see my progress. That's something I can do in seconds that I couldn't. I'd have to go through, you know, pages and pages of notes that wouldn't really make sense. So when I'm doing my yearly review this year, I can be like, what are the goals that I crushed? Like, what did I say was important and what did I complete? And so again, when I'm doing that review, I can say here are highlights of the year. Here's what I did on a month by month. Holy crap. Like we forget what we, we accomplished. And so I think putting this stuff digitally is just so helpful personally. I find to see my progress over time and to really feel like I'm, I'm hitting those milestones. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And I really like, like overall, I know that some people are turned off from both notion and bullet journaling because it is a lot of manual effort. Uh, but for me, that's why it works. Um, I journal about the things that I need to be paying more attention to. Um, it was like, uh, like kind of my story around starting work brighter is that uh, a, a an automated Slack notification is what finally got me to consistently take the ADHD meds I was final, mm. I was constantly forgetting to take. It was automation, it was like tech and stuff like this that finally helped me get all of this like non-work, non-productivity stuff in my life together. Um, whether that's, you know, Slack notifications or to do us to do's for taking my meds or health trackers in notion it is effort but that ensures that i'm putting effort into those areas of my life so that's a really yeah. good thing yeah. if you're picking the right things to journal about and that's a <laughs> self-awareness practice but yeah. one of the big things when i was talking about how i owe so much more than i realized to bullet journaling is that i realized it's really a self-awareness practice and that's been one of the biggest areas that i've grown in over the past few years and i hadn't realized bullet journaling is why until i read the bullet journal book yeah and something that Brittany said that i think is so like important and powerful is that like the act of journaling and getting those getting those thoughts down is something that will help in any kind of like healing or empowering process that you're that you're going through i get you know like i do a lot of that too like i can get super stressed about things that are going on with work or family or whatever it is and just writing those down um can be like that's a great coping mechanism <laughs> for me and uh, i would encourage anyone who's kind of thinking about that to also like something that i hear a lot when people want to get started with maybe not even bullet journaling but just like journaling and writing down mm -hmm. things is not to like and Brittany did such a good job of describing this early on is that you're just like trying to le raise your level of awareness about it and not like you're not playing Judging the judge it. or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. It's just like you're being like almost like a, an objective, like a, a, a third party observer to how your day is going and how you're being as a person. And that is really powerful. And you don't have it doesn't have to be fancy it shouldn't probably isn't going to be and that's totally that's totally fine so it's it's yeah it's a really powerful tool for me as well yeah yeah and any fanciness that like i do have like all of the
came number one over time. Yeah. And number two for a reason. Like mm -hmm. I am, like I said, I am like a whimsical little, like I have kind of a, in a lot of ways, the attention span of interest of like a toddler. And so like the bright colors really do make an impact on my day. Yeah. Um, and they really do. And there is like detail and reasoning behind each of them. So I can make connections, um, but also they weren't there right away. That was like, that was an Amtrak train when I had too slow like Wi-Fi <laughs> to like do much. But I was like, oh, I can, I can make things pretty. So. I think a journaling practice could be a really great first step even for people that are a bit intimidated with Notion and just learning how a database works. And, you know, even if it's like a simple entry with a date and a couple prompts for yourself, I think that's like a really great way to start. And then over time, you're going to develop what are better questions I can ask myself or what else do I want to write about? And uh, for me, like the, the daily journal was something that I've tried to have a daily journal for like, you know, a decade, right? right. It never stuck yeah. until until Notion. And now I'm like, oh, there's a pretty picture every day. And then that's motivating. Like I, I will always take a picture every single day that represents the day. And that's become a habit. So slowly you're like layering in those habits. I do a pick of the day. I gratitude every day. Like slowly you, you start to become I mean, a better we're person. Start out on another book, Atomic Habits. Who's yeah. read that? Yeah. <laughs> Like it is really about. Like, <laughs> like point to um, yeah, yeah, and I actually I teach journaling inside my membership and starting a journaling practice. And I recommend starting with two questions: What happened today, and how do you feel about it? That can be one because that can be as easy as one thing. If you had a stressful day, that can be five pages. It just kind of covers the bases. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. And I found questions I recommend with my weekly planner too. Like I, um, on a daily basis and on a weekly and monthly basis, I asked myself like, how effective was I, what was my energy? Um, and then like three words that just kind of represent how I felt about the day and about the week. And over time, when I had overcommitted, put in there like six weeks in a row, it was like, well, what are you going to do about it now? Like I keep writing this in my journal and in my weekly planner every week. Well, how, like, <laughs> If I don't want to feel that way, then right. what do I need to do to make more space? So it, it kind of forced me to confront, well, are the decisions that you're making every day continuing to contribute to this feeling that you said you didn't want to feel? So it, it has, I think, created more mindfulness for me personally of like, okay, I have more control over what happens in my day and how can I create more space? And if I want to feel less of this and more of this, well, how do my actions need to reflect that? So that's, it's been so helpful for me personally to, to start creating more of that space. Yeah. Love it. Let's see if any more other questions, um, if anyone else has any questions that you want to get in before we, I know a lot of these we covered in your tours and such, so um, they may not be as relevant. Um, like when you said, how do people get started? I think like you just have to start somewhere, even if it's really a tiny action. It doesn't have to be tracking every single part of your life. It's just starting with something really small, maybe picking up the, the bullet journaling book to, to get started. Um, a few people said, I have a journal set up in Notion, but never end up using it. How do I use Notion to make me use it more frequently? Um, do you right. have a routine around journaling? Because I know that like for me, there's um, not, a I don't kind of live by my calendar, but I live by, I still do use Todoist. And that's kind of where I calendar block, but it's more routine blocking or whatever else. Um, and it has like my morning routine and my nightly routine in there. So there's not a specific time assigned to them, but I do, you know, have the space or a kind of room set aside in my day for that. And then one thing that I do like about um, using like an another app to manage that is that Todoist lets you link out to other apps. So I actually have that task linked to my journaling template. In, so I can actually, you know, it pops up. And if you are a calendar person or like a notification person, or you can set a due date either in Todoist, or you can make this a calendar appointment, or you can set an alarm on your phone that then includes the, the URL, the link to your Notion journal. And so it would pop up at the time of day that you want to do your evening routine or something like that. And it would link to your journal template or something like that. Awesome. Uh, Rachel did ask, what's your method for learning more things about Notion and trying new things? We do these office hours every week and we do have a couple starting from scratch versions that might be really helpful for you. I also posted a link to my um, YouTube channel and sidebar. I, almost every week I make a new video about how to do something in Notion and I try to vary 
um, advanced use cases with just getting started cases. So um, definitely check that out. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, and if you ever have requests for future episodes and things to cover, um, definitely just let us know. And we're always eager to, to help out because I, I know it's a giant blank canvas when you first get started and it's, it feels like a bit of a, a fire hose and understanding databases versus pages, I think is one of the most confusing parts. Um, so I do have a video that's like databases versus pages, wrapping your head around Notion. And also their documentation is amazing. A lot of people I've seen have forgotten or, or don't actually know that that question mark in the bottom right hand side has incredible documentation. So I do recommend going through some of that, like how to get started. There's, there's just so much in there. I know it's a lot, it's a bit of a commitment. Um, I think also checking out other people's pre-made templates is a great way to start. Experiment with those. Don't be afraid to kind of mess it up. You could always move your information around. You're never stuck with kind of where it lives. So don't be afraid to, to play around and not worry that it has to be this perfect setup when you first get started. I just saw a question come in about Todoist integration. To be clear, it's not like an official integration. It's that Todoist supports linking to other apps. And so I just have a link in that task that links to like the 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 URL of the Notion page. So it ends up being like a one click thing and it's so convenient, but it's not anything official. Someone said, uh, I'm someone who regularly thinks that I never get anything done, especially when I don't journal. I can see the value in the macro awareness that the Notion daily tracking has. I can relate and we have the same name. So are we? <laughs> <laughs> Brittany's writing from another browser <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah. There's two of me. How long did it take each of you to get comfortable with Notion or at least get your system fully set up with journaling and getting things done? My Notion journey has been like a long one. I created an account probably like a year ago, but I just didn't really know what I was going to use it for. Uh, then this spring, I launched the YouTube channel for Work Brighter. And so that is when I kind of created my first thing and I started the content calendar in there and things have just been building since. I think it was in like September that I started bullet journaling um, in Notion. And that was again after I read the bullet journal method and just kind of got really re-inspired around my bullet journaling habits and decided to level up what I was already doing. Yeah, for me- And I make Notion changes, oh. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, and I make changes every week. Like I said, I have admin time blocked out every week. I like to call it my building time where I build in different systems and just kind of play around with tech. And I have like the list of ideas I want to do. And so I just like, I play a little bit at a time. And then having that, having that kind of recess um, to play in there is great from keeping me from wanting to play around like in the middle of a Tuesday when I should be writing because I know <laughs> that like I only have to wait till Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, Notion started as and still primarily continues to be where I plan and execute on my own projects. Um, you know, we use some different tools at Podia. I'm working, make some, make some migrations with the team. But <laughs> we uh, so for me, I uh, like Brittany, I started with my YouTube channel in terms of putting the majority of like my content calendar and everything that happens with the video goes into like a Trello style card view. And then I use each one as you know part of the database and the content calendar for when I publish. I did my entire, I run really everything from my personal side business in Notion. I do a simple book keep, bookkeeping database as well. So I can keep those uh, things kind of balanced out and visible. And yeah, so just everything, everything with courses and like even physical products will, will all go in there in terms of like consistent tracking planning. I wrote the majority of like all the content for my latest course in notion as well, because, because just to have everything in here and have it, you know, linked and have your deadlines and your reminders and your tasks is so nice. Yes. Yeah. And same for a lot of that. <laughs> Um, so I asked a great question. He was saying, do you guys have a Notion workspace for your family, personal, and or one for your team? Or do you use one for everything? It was hard enough to get my partner on Todoist and I'm <laughs> still not happy when I assign things. So it's a process. I do have things family related in there, but he is not, you know, like a shared user. <laughs> 
Um, and then I just also wanted to add on to what um, Matt was saying with like moving all of his side business like databases into Notion. I do still have a lot of databases in Airtable, but then what I love, one of the things I love about Notion is embedding. So I have a lot of view only versions of my Airtable databases embedded into Notion. And that is amazing, especially for content because I have a lot of content automation going over in Airtable so that you can automate that. And then if I wanna just like check in and see what's going on with those automated databases, I can view it in Notion and I don't have to click out. And love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, similar, <laughs> again, very similar for me for, a lot of for a lot of those um my my wife is a nurse and so she has very little need for a lot of like the digital tools that i find so mm -hmm. interesting and fun <laughs> um and so uh but what we have done kind of intermittently and i can i can show you all this real quick um because when we do something shared uh, online with this we do have a database or a workspace that we use for you know like our family here. And what that is, is that we have an ongoing, these are like our task I task items, our, you know, agenda for the Sunday night review, things that we need to have as a to-do. Then we do kind of the same thing for um, expense tracking. And we do a lot of our expense tracking in Airtable, like from a, from a big picture view, grocery list, meals, my PTO schedule. I, we haven't been using this as much, but like uh, an embedded Google calendar is here uh, that we can look at food inventory stuff to save for us. So you can see everything that we have in here is just a series of pages and databases that we have. And then our like upcoming, you know, like summer, summer trip in 2020. So we just have all of it in right here. And even though we don't look at it every week, here it is, even though we don't look at it every week again, um, or anymore, or for a while, whenever there is something that we start to go in and plan for, this is what we always come back to. Yeah, and I definitely have something like that in the life admin folder of my bullet journal. I just don't have Alex use it. I mean, he's more than happy to like view the links. <laughs> like when we were on vacation, I had a page that was just like all of our reservation information. He was looking at the view only version of the link, but like he, I don't, picture him learning how to use Notion except for viewing a link anytime soon. Mm -hmm. He is a tax accountant, so he is learning enough much more <laughs> confusing <laughs> software. And like he has, yes, tech stresses him out enough already. <laughs> I'm just gonna let him view only. <laughs> yeah. Luck luckily enough, my husband is uh, is pretty tech savvy and the both of us are pretty entrenched in Notion. So we can assign each other stuff cool. and and we use that for you know personal and business and that's whatever. Great. So yeah. I if never. I didn't personally enjoy managing it all so much myself, maybe we wouldn't, yeah. but like, I am more than happy to be the project manager. Yeah. This relationship. <laughs> That's awesome. A long time ago before we were using notion, we started, we tried to do some of this with Trello and, you know, kind of a similar thing, but I'd be like, babe, I at mentioned you on that card and just <laughs> stared at me. She's like, you I don't know what about? you're saying. And I don't care. No. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can get at, when we like when we were moving, we used Google Docs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so like if we were to move again and he wanted to use Google Docs, I would obviously just embed that Google Doc into my notion. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Yeah, I'll cool. meet him halfway. <laughs> I think we covered most of those questions and I know that both of you have a lot of resources that answer some of these questions. So I think um, what I'll do too is, you know, we did paste a lot of those links in the sidebar, um, but maybe after this call too, uh, if the both of you wanna send me any of those links, we'll make sure to get those sent out through the Crowdcast uh, registration link. Anyone who registered will get access to those and uh, you can check out both Matt and Brittany's amazing bullet journaling related and notion related resources. Cool. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I think Thank that's you. it. Yeah. Everything. Thank you so much for being so generous and sharing your spaces and sharing your process. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, we will see you on the internet. Where Thanks, can people, everyone. Where can more people oh. can find you actually? Maybe put, post a quick link in the um, in the sidebar there so people can find you, whether it's Twitter or your YouTube channel. I'm just putting the work brighter URL and the two handles that I'm at on most platforms. Awesome. I'm personally that Bieberg and then work brighter is on Instagram at work brighter. Awesome. And that's where a lot of my bullet journaling stuff tends to go. And then the personal stuff tends to be more marketing related. 
Thanks everyone for coming. And just a you know quick reminder, we do these every Friday morning. You can watch any of the past ones. Um, if you click Notion's name in the top, uh, you can go to their Crowdcast uh, landing page and just see all of the past ones. There's lots of beginner ones. There's lots of advanced ones. Uh, we've got one next week that's all on uh, Kai Davis's battle boards, which is going to be ridiculous. Uh, the way I like Kai, the sound you, of it's, that. it's wild. I love how Kai's brain works. So. Um, it's pretty, I think it's pretty advanced and pretty nerdy. So I'm pretty <laughs> excited to see. <laughs> Matt, you're so lucky. You can just say, look for Matt Raglan. There is, <laughs> there are two other Britney Burgers. One is a marketer uh, who actually, we used to live in the uh, same state. No. Uh, and then another is a personal development person who came out with a book. And so I'm like, okay, great. Both of my niches sure. have oh, another yeah. Britney Burger. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. There's a musician in Austin, Texas that we've struck up a quasi friendship. He's like, hey, how... He's like, are you, do you do stuff online? He's like, yeah, you're toast. Like, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Like, I don't have any, like, it's impossible to get anything that's just Matt that's worth anything because, um, you know, Matt Mullenweg just like snaps up all the good Matt oh, no. domains or like squeezes people out of them. <laughs> so, I'll take, I'll take the name. <laughs> the full name. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week weekend and uh see you online thanks everyone thanks bye, bye.